Big shout out to Bayer and the National 4-H Council for partnering with us on this video. It's back to school time, and right now you may be doing more online learning, but there's one thing that'll never change, and that is the need for pencils. This is a regular number two pencil, and despite the name leaded pencil, there is in fact no lead in this pencil. Pencil lead is actually made of graphite mixed with clay, which is then compressed into thin rods. This pencil lead is then glued into wood blocks and gets carved down into pencils. The confusion for calling it lead actually came from the early 1500s when people thought there was lead in the raw ingredient graphite. So this got me thinking, would it be possible to make our own pencils? And if we could, could we make a giant pencil that actually works? To start, we first need something to replicate graphite. Graphite is nothing more than elemental carbon and a hexagonal crystalline structure, similar to diamonds, which are also pure carbon, but have a different arrangement for their crystal structure. And while we can't draw with diamonds, we can create another form of carbon that does draw very well, and that is charcoal. In honor of agricultural science, Bayer, and 4-H, we're gonna use this dried out corn to start with. We're then gonna put the corn in these paint cans with a vent hole up top. Got a can. Yeah. Now, in order to make charcoal, we really wanna heat this whole thing up in absence of oxygen, or as little oxygen as possible. So it makes sense to put as much material that has carbon in the can as possible and pack it as tightly as you can. This After that, we're gonna put the cans in a regular open face fire pit. Hey, right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this can that's now totally full with our corn. We're gonna plop it right there in that center spot. There we go. As the can heats up with low access to oxygen, the vent up top allows the corn to off gas. This lets water, methane, hydrogen, and tar out of the corn and leaves behind charcoal, which is close to pure carbon. All right, so here's what we're gonna do and then we're very quickly going to plug these holes so oxygen doesn't get down in there. Now we put the nails in the holes to keep oxygen out of the interior of the can. The can's still really hot, and so if we had oxygen inside the can, it would react with the material and it would turn to ash. Well, one thing's for sure, uh, definitely is much lighter. Wow. Oh wow, it's really hard. That is essentially pure carbon from corn. All right, so now that we have our charcoal made from corn, it's time to make our giant pencil. So we're gonna start by turning this four by four by eight piece of wood into an octagon shape so that it looks more like a pencil. Now, because we don't need to fill the entire pencil with pencil lead, all we really need to do is drill a hole about as deep as this drill bit will go. Then we're gonna fill that portion of it with the pencil lead itself and then we're gonna carve upwards to sharpen our pencil with some power tools. Good form. Perfect form. Well, see, you wanna use real smooth, even brush strokes back and forth. You really wanna thin it out. Really get an even coverage all over everything. All right, now while this is drying, we can move on to making our replica pencil lead. We're gonna do this by tweaking the formula used for regular pencil lead and replace graphite with corn charcoal. All right, now the first step is we're gonna grind up this corn charcoal in this blender. Very fine. Now we're gonna make a 50-50 mixture of bentonite and kaolin clay. And from here on out, we're just gonna to refer to this as just clay. We're gonna use 200 grams and 200 grams of bentonite and kaolin clay. Next, we're gonna add the clay mixture to the charcoal in a two to one ratio. So two parts charcoal to one part clay. Now the reason that we add the clay is because it adds to the hardness of the pencil lid, as well as binding all of the things together. Now I did some small testing and I found that the best formula is a one to one ratio of the charcoal clay mix to paraffin wax. In our case, this is gonna be 600 grams of the charcoal clay mix and 600 grams of paraffin wax. Hi. The next step is we're gonna mix all of our ingredients and put it in our pencil while it's still molten hot. Now we're doing this so the mixture forms the inside of the pencil and really grips the wood grain. Air pockets getting out. Okay, so while our pencil lead is cooling, let's add our eraser that's made from a coffee can and craft rubber glued together. I mean, I think that's perfect. I think that's good. Looks like an eraser. Our pencil lead has fully cooled, and now it's time 
to sharpen the pencil. I mean, yeah, so far, it's looking pretty awesome. So now we're gonna attempt to do this on the sharpener, yeah? Pretty awesome. The details are so on point. I mean, it really does look like a pencil. I am so pleased at how this turned out. This really looks like a giant number two pencil. The last step is we're gonna see if this bad boy can write. In honor of agricultural science, Bayer and 4-H, I'm gonna write out Bayer and 4-H. Oh, oh, it's a brilliant write. Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> Bear. You know what? I'm actually pretty good at this. Bear and should I do the like this thing? Boom. That's great. That's the money shot. The lead actually is very durable. It's very strong. It doesn't crumble. I'm just really stoked that this thing works as well as it does. I would say that's just overall a success. Okay, so we went from corn carbon to charcoal to a mixture replicating graphite pencil lead. Now, while this was a very unique carbon transformation, carbon going from one form to another is actually quite common. In fact, it's happening all around us all the time. Let's take the carbon and the corn, for example. The carbon in the corn was obtained through CO2 in the atmosphere during the plant's photosynthetic process. From here, organisms, like us, consume the corn, which ends up in the organism's bodies. These same organisms then release some of this carbon through respiration as CO2 back into the atmosphere. Now, this cycle functions normally when the creatures here on Earth are consuming and releasing equal amounts of carbon. However, with the advancement of technology like cars, planes, and industrial energy production, this has led to the use of fossil fuels such as combusting coal and gas. The result is that the amount of CO2 has risen faster than the Earth can consume it. Too much CO2 in the atmosphere can lead to higher global temperatures, which can have disastrous ecological consequences. Not awesome. Now, here's the good news. There are ways to offset the CO2 imbalance, and one of those methods is called carbon sequestering, which can be done through certain agricultural practices. Bayer is working to help farmers apply these sustainable practices. They're doing this by reducing tillage to help sequester carbon in the soil and ensuring the more precise use of crop protection and fertilizer through product innovation and digital tools to increase efficiency. Since digital tools monitor the soil composition, farmers can actively track their progress in sequestering carbon in the soil for more productive crops and a healthier planet. Agricultural science is incredible. It's also saving the planet. Um, so we went from corn to charcoal to this like mixture that replicates pencil lead to making a giant pencil that actually works. Big shout out to Bayer and the National 4-H Council for partnering with us on this video. Let us know in the comment section below, what else would you do with this giant pencil? If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you really soon. To learn more about what Bayer and 4-H are doing to support future ag leaders through the Science Matters program, please visit the link in the description below.